Welcome to the DC Arabic Teachers Council Workshop, How to Design an Online Arabic Course with Sana Hilmi and Dr. Xiaoyu Chi. I'm Mimi Kirk with the Institute for Middle East Studies at George Washington University, who with the generous support of Qatar Foundation International hosts these workshops. So just a couple of announcements before we start. Um, first, I'll be sending you a very brief survey after the workshop that we'd so appreciate uh, you filling out. It's only three questions. And secondly, I wanted to let you all know that next Thursday, June 23rd at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, the Institute for Middle East Studies at GW will hold an in-person reception and lecture with Dr. Elliot Kola of Georgetown University, who will speak on geography and Arabic literature. And that's our, our first and I think only um, in-person event this year. Um, although we may do some more in the fall, we'll have to see how things are going. Um, at any rate, there will be food and a resource exchange for teachers of Arabic, and it's in the Elliott School of International Affairs rooftop room, um, which is a lovely space that has views of the Capitol and landmarks uh, in DC. So if you're in the area, if you're in DC, we hope you'll come. Um, I'm gonna put the link to RSVP in the chat uh, after I introduce our speakers who I'd like to officially welcome. Um, so we're very lucky to have Dr. Xiaoyu Chi and, and Professor S uh, Sena Hilmi with us today. Um, Dr. Chi is Senior Instructional Designer at NOVA Online at Northern Virginia Community College, where she designs and oversees all world language courses. For 25 years, she has worked closely with faculty to design quality online courses and provide pedagogical consultation and instructional design support. She's also trained faculty to develop and deliver successful and effective online, hybrid, and technology-enhanced courses. Dr. Chi received her MS in EDD in Instructional Technology from Northern Illinois University. And Sana Helmi is Assistant Professor of Arabic at Northern Virginia Community College. She previously taught at George Mason University, where she coordinated the university's Arabic program for over five years and received a Title VI grant to create a minor in Arabic. She's taught a variety of online courses and created an Arabic 201 course on Blackboard before shifting to using Canvas. Professor Helmi has an MA in Linguistics and a TESL, a certificate from George Mason. Um, she also serves on the advisory board for the DC Arabic Teachers Council, and I personally am very grateful for her guidance and work on that. So with that, I am going to give the floor to the presenters, um, and thank you so much for, for being with us. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, thanks uh, everyone for taking the time to come to this workshop. Um, this workshop is about how to design an Arabic, uh, online Arabic course. But actually, my part of the presentation can be applied to designing any online courses. And um, sorry, let me turn off my video to save some bandwidth now that you have seen me and there's no need for you to look at my talking head anymore, right? So let me turn, stop my video. And now I'm going to share um, our presentations. So. Oops, okay, okay. hold on one second. I think uh, it's not right. Okay, let's share again. So what screen can you see now? Uh, okay. Your whole desktop and PowerPoint. Yeah, I think you need okay. to enlarge. So you can see the PowerPoint, yeah. right? Yeah, could you make it bigger? Yeah, I will. Yeah, okay. So I will make it. Yeah, uh, this is, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is our title, of course. Uh, and uh, actually this, uh, we are the presenters and actually uh, we'll just be introduced, so I will just skip this part. As you know that my job is to work with the faculty members like Sana to design quality online courses. And uh, let me get started here. Okay, let me first talk about the course design process we use at Nova Online. First, uh, when a new course will be designed, the instruction designer and the instructor will have a kickoff meeting where we go over the MOU's expectations and the course map. We show sample courses and then we design 
uh, we discussed design timelines, etc. Then we move on to the learning materials um, phrase where we decide if we are going to use OER materials or we choose a good published textbook. Then we work on the course map phrase. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about the course map later on, okay? Then we uh, write the instructions and the rubrics in the course. Then we come to the um, production phrase where we start to build course homepages, create modules, gradebook, and syllabus. Then we have uh, the content uh, review, uh, which, which, which should be done by a subject matter expert. The design review uh, will be done uh, again against the QM rubrics. Then we do DEI review. Uh, you do understand the DEI, right? It's the uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And then we do uh, accessibility check. Finally, we do course copy. And this is a continuous improvement uh, process to create a quality online course. When we design a course, we use the quality matters standards to guide our design process. Uh, are you all familiar with quality matters? Quality matters or QM is a quality assurance leader in online education. The quality matters program provides professional development, a set of rubrics, and a course, uh, a course peer review process that work together to support faculty in improving the quality of online courses. And it is uh, research-based tools. It consists of eight general standards, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight general standards and uh, 42 specific uh, standards that describe best practices in online course design. The eight, stand, the eight general standards are course overview and introduction, for example, here. So it makes sure that instructions make clear how to get started and where to find the various course components. The learners are introduced to the purpose and structure of the course. And then as learners ask to introduce themselves to the class, learning objectives, we have to make sure those learning objectives are measurable and they are consistent with the course and level learning objectives and so on. Oops, sorry. And when it comes to the learning activities and learners interaction, so the learning activity will promote achievement of stated learning objectives, objectives and the requirements for learners interaction are clear stated. And when it comes to the accessibility and the usability, we have to make sure that the course navigation facilitates ease of use, the course design facilitates readability, and the course multimedia facilitates ease of use. So these are all the um, uh, general, I mean, not specific standards. We move back here. Have you noticed that uh, there are some points values in the last column here? Uh, this rubric has a scoring system used by the review team to determine whether a course meets standards. The Essential standards, the three points are the essential standards. That, it, that means that you have to meet those standards. Look at those learning objectives area. All of them are essential standards. Of course, and then there are some two points and one point. They are not essential. But so the essential standards must be met during the review process and an over, overall score of 85% of the points possible are required for a course to pass the uh, re review. So this is about uh, QMs. So when we at uh, Nova Online, when we design courses, we based on this 
QM standards. Let me talk about the course map. We we'll also use course map, map in, in designing a new course. Here is a example of one unit or one module's course map. I, as you know that a course can have like up to 12, 15 units or module depends on the length of the course. So here is in one of the units or one of the modules, we sp spell out uh, the uh, learning objectives. So in this specific uh, module or units, the students we were able, able to talk about and scrap clothing and so on. And in this column, we want to make sure that those unit objectives are aligned with course learning object, course level learning objectives. So we, we say that, okay, because the course level learning object has uh, several, so this unit object will meet uh, are in alignment with this A, B, C, D of the course uh, level objectives. And here's the topics. And here are the instructional materials. Students will learn the content by reading tutorials, video clips, and the lectures. And here are the assessment and learning activities. So they will do the exercise from the publisher's site. They will do a self-introduction and they have additional speaking exercise followed by the cultural activity and then online meetings and the quizzes. So this is one unit's a course map. So we will develop this unit based on this course map. Next, I would like to talk about some best practices in online course design, in addition to those outlined in quality matters. First, I will talk about the course content presentation or information presentation. Like I said, my presentation can be used not only in Arabic courses, but uh, will be applied to any online courses. So some of the examples I used uh, will be from the other courses I helped design. Hope this will be okay with you. Let's use this discussion assignment in an arts online class as an example. Let's see what information we are focusing on here and what presentation strategy we can use to improve the information presentation. This is about the information presentation. Here, students are asked to explore the terracotta warriors from the burial mount of the first emperor in China by reading the articles and watching the videos. Then they are told to do something afterwards and uh, they were told that this assignment is worth 30 points. Okay, uh, I think the, the assignment has the information needed, but it is not well presented. Let's see what and how we can improve this. First, when we present the information, we want to make the direction stand out so students can see them at a glance. We don't want students to search for the information that they need. They have to go through to search for them. To make this direction stand out, we need to do what people call chunking the information. So here are the revised directions for this same assignment. We have used the headings like purpose, directions, and grading to chunk the assignment into digestible bites or chunks. So it is easy for students to skim and quickly identify the main points of the directions. Notice that so far, we haven't changed anything to the original assignments. We just separated the first sentence from the first paragraph and added the headings here. Those brownish outlines are the ones I added for demonstration purpose. We don't have them in the actual assignments, okay? And actually, according to the uh, transparent assignment design theory, the purpose part should describe 
why students are completing this assignment and what knowledge and skills they will gain from this experience and how this assignment is in alignment with the learning objectives and explain how this knowledge and skill are relevant will help students in the future. So, so here the purpose, this is not really a purpose statement. So here is a revised purpose statement. It says that the purpose of this discussion is to learn about this. The knowledge you will gain will help you do this. And this assignment is in alignment with this module's learning, learning objectives. Additionally, this assignment will help foster a sense of global awareness. So this really is a true purpose statement. We have added back actually to the assignment. Also, you see that grading, it says that this activity is worth 30 points. I will talk about this, okay, later. Okay, we have used, when we use the, the headings, headings here, we need to use two headings. We don't, we can just make the text bigger and bold it. We need to apply styles. We need to use the styles by, step, by selecting heading one, or say heading two, etc. We can in Word or PowerPoint or in Canvas or in your, in Blackboard. With styles applied to headings, those screen readers users will be able to know which blocks of text are headings and what level each heading occupies. And this will also benefit those students navigating with the keyboard or other assistive devices. Okay, more about presentation, user lists and the bullets. Simply chunking the assignment isn't enough. We also need to support scheming and scanning by making it easy for our students to quickly identify the main points of the chunks. We can do this by including numbers and bullets. When we use numbers in a list, our students can see the sequence of the instructions in a step-by-step -step format. It will also help them to understand the order in which things happen. Again, make sure we will apply styles instead of typing the numbers. More about the presentation, use descriptive URLs. When we insert hyperlinks like this, don't just provide with a link URL because they are meaningless both to you and to the screen reader. We should give a description to these links, just like the examples here. So this is a description to the uh, URL. And also avoid using phrases like click here. Notice here, we, also, we also included the length of the video so students will know the time expected to spend on watching this. Also, instead of giving the descriptive links to the videos, sometimes it is more effective just to embed the video into the assignment. So it will be more visually appealing and easy for students to use. However, when using videos and audios, we should provide captions here, and we should provide a summary of the video and lecture, and sometimes even to give a script for students to print out. In terms of accessibility, this is helpful for those students who are hard of hearing, or those students whose audios are muted, or disabled on the devices they are using. Colors, using colors for the presentation. Sometimes our instructors like to use colors to highlight important information to enhance students' comprehension. But when we use colors, we need to be careful and use them effectively. 
it is essential that there is a sufficient color contrast between the text and the background. The color contrast has to be strong enough so that those colorblind students, those visually impaired students, and those students with, who depend on screen readers can distinguish the colors. In general, light color text should have a dark background and dark color text should have a light background. Here, the red color is not dark enough against the yellow background. We need we need to check to see which co uh, red color we should use in this case. Here is uh, improved color. Now the red color is dark enough against the yellow background. But how do we know if we use the color correctly to check the color contrast? We can either use the accessibility checker uh, in, in Canvas, I'm sure that in Blackboard they have this too, or we can go to a, a, a outside uh, a website called the Web AIM to use its uh, uh, contrast checker to put the foreground color and background color here to see if we're past the uh, uh, contrast checker. So this is a way to check, you know, to use this to check if we have used the color correctly. More about the presentation is the graphics. We include images in our uh, assignment. And a picture, we know that a picture is worth a thousand words. Uh, those images could be text images, informative images, and the decorative images. The example here is an informative image because it tells everything. Okay, so for this kind of informative image, we need to provide a non description for equal access. Always consider the user experience and how we can make the information accessible to all users. We should write a detailed uh, description or we can write a summary in the alt text area. We can also include a full description underneath the image. If the description is too long, we can put them in a separate document and link it to that document. And also when we write the uh, descriptions, don't write something like uh, an image of, or just keywords and phrases. We should write in proper sentences. When we insert decorative images, here are the decorative image, make sure that our image represents the diverse student population. That is, that is not just an image of one gender or race, but different genders and races when appropriate. When we have an interactive presentation, this is actually an interactive presentation that we used, we created in our Arabic course, that students need to click on, click on certain areas to go to each presentation. So in this case, we need to uh, create an alternative format for this presentation. We say that the following presentation is designed for those students who need the presentation in an alternative format using a screen reader. Because we do have a student need that. That's the one we created for Sana's class. So we tell them that they need to use the Acrobat Pro. We give them the link to download the Acrobat Pro and they need to turn on the accessibility feature. Here is a tutorial on how to do that. And then here are the, the two PDF, PDF files, that, which is the alternative format from this original interactive presentation. Language. Let's talk about the language we are using in writing directions in the course. When we write directions, we need to use plain English. 
for inclusiveness. In order to communicate, in order to communicate effectively online, we need to write the direction clearly and, and concisely. We need to use plain English to tailor our writing to our diverse student population. There's no need to use big words when we could use simple words. When we use the right directions, always start with a verb and we need to write it in parallel sentence structure. For example, here, the first uh, two, okay, if we, we use uh, uh, small words, we said briefly describe and uh, tell why you choose it and then name at least three specific things. And then here, why are the warriors or the palace important? This is not in a parallel structure. So we have to change them to explain why the warriors or the palace important. What do they teach us? We have to change it to tell us what they teach us. So we have to write in parallel sentence structures. Start with a, a verb, use small words. That's the plain English. And also more about uh, use language. We should use inclusive and positive language in our directions. We should use gender neutral language. We should use conversational language, people first language and the positive phrases. So I'm going, sorry, I, I'm going over this too quickly because I will have to leave some time for sauna, okay. So that's about uh, language use. Now let's talk about the type of assessments. As you can see in this example, basically students are evaluated by three high stake exams, quiz and exams. A good over, overall all assignment, uh, assessment design is to use a variety of assessments to allow, to allow students to demonstrate their knowledge in multiple ways and make each individual assessment worth a lower percentage of the course grade. Here is an improved example. We add different types of assessments and each type of assessment is worth a lower percentage of the course grade. Another one is about uh, submission options. We know that the students differ in the ways in which they can be engaged or motivated to learn. Let's talk at, take a look at this example. Students are required to create a PowerPoint presentation. Some students may like to demonstrate learning through speaking while others want to do through writing. Since presentation skills are not the learning goal here, so in order to be inclu inclusive, the instructor added another option here. So students can either write a post or record a short presentation. So it's, you know, give options. And also different format is another way to give options. As we know that students have different learning styles and schedules. Some students may prefer to work individually, while others would love to be paired or work within a team. So we give them options. They can either work as a small group or work individually. Measurement. This is the one that we, I mentioned about, about the, the grading for that uh, art discussion. It says that the, this activity is worth 30 points. But uh, it didn't explain how each post would be graded, right? So we should actually add a grading rubric to discussion. So we, we should always give a grading rubric so students know clearly what expectations are um, for them and how they are being graded. Now let's talk about the support. When we talk about support in online courses, we usually think about technical support and academic support. 
provided by our institution. But here, we want to talk, discuss the support we can integrate into the design of learning activities and assessment. First, we can provide the modeling as a support. This is a discussion in anatomy and a physiology course. It requires students to share a medical problem they or their relatives have experienced before. Okay, this is the okay, original one. To help students understand what a good discussion should be, we converted an exemplary discussion from a previous class into a PDF document. We also provided the instructors a comment to help students understand why the discussion is excellent and how it meets the expectations. And here is a screenshot of part of that PDF document. It's, it, so this is an example of a good discussion. And uh, the last idea I want to share with you today is to provide tutorials for the use of selected technologies. Actually, I already showed you example in that interactive um, presentation that we created for Sana's class, right? And uh, here is also, this example requires students to submit a paper via uh, turn it in on Canvas to check for plagiarism. Students have come to our class with different technology background. And this may be some, somebody's first time using Canvas. So to provide support, we added the directions on, uh, on submitting a file upload assignment in Canvas. And also uh, we added directions on how to access uh, Turnitin to, um, to check the, uh, the report. So that's about the support. So just now, I just briefly talked about uh, when in a course, when we, how do we present the information? What are the ways we need to um, think about uh, or the ways we need to avoid? And I think, that, uh, I think that's the end of my part of the presentation. And I'm going to uh, let Susanna talk about her part of the presentation. I'm so sorry I talked too fast, but I hope you, you, you can ask me any question if you have. Dr. Chi, there's a question um, on Turnitin. Does it check Arabic text, text too? That's in the chat. I don't think so. <laughs> at this point. Okay, Sana, I think uh, it's your no turn more. now. <laughs> okay, so no more questions. I just don't wanna. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Shayu. Thank you for accepting to come. Um, this is a really great presentation. I uh, would like to just say that Quality Matters taught me a lot. So if anybody has the opportunity to take a workshop with Quality Matters, I think that's a great way to start. And thank you, Mimi, for bringing me here. And uh, I'm going to share the PowerPoint first. And then I don't know where it is, hold on. I guess I have to read, hold on. And then we'll um, start. Okay, can you all hear me well? I hope so. Yes, you're good. Okay. Thanks, Anna. Sure. So, thank you all for coming. And I would like to focus on Arabic language specifically, but also a lot of topics that I'm going to mention also could help other language courses. Okay, so um, 
things that I would like to just mention is getting ready, choosing the topics, addressing students' needs, creating the lesson on Canvas or Blackboard and outside, how to put it together. And then the assignments, quizzes, feedback, online meetings, and just some advices. So my first step, I would say getting ready. Are you ready to do an online course? And again, back again, quality matters. This is what I did first. It really helped me a lot to create a course. At the same time, Nova pro provided another workshop on like just to take a course, just to see yourself, how it feels like when you're a student online. That was for through Blackboard because at that time it was Blackboard. So I highly recommend if you can just take a, any workshop online, 100% online, just to feel how it works and make sure that you know what students are expect, expecting from you as a designer and as an instructor. Uh, I would also recommend that you get used to using Blackboard or Canvas, whichever platform you're going to use. Uh, there's always a sandbox for Canvas, so that is very nice to use. And then you want to get ready and then set to do it. Um, you really want to know or decide. If you have the opportunity to decide the course, you want to know exactly what you want to have in that course, the level. Or like me, I had to get to know, of course, the course content summary, contact hours. I'm not talking about like three credits. I'm talking about how many hours are you going to give for students during the week? So for example, uh, if you take a three credit class at George Mason, one, one credit hour is equal to 15 hours per semester. If you're doing it at Nova, it's almost 17 hours. So you really want to know how many hours do you need for students to work on that uh, course, okay? Because the amount of work should not go more or less, right? At the same time, the textbook would be an issue because uh, you might want to have a specific textbook. Maybe it's, you know, expensive. It's, is it your choice? Uh, do you want to, you know, open uh, resources? If so, we'll see. I mean, it could be a good idea. It could be not. So after you make your decision, once you get into the course, what language do you want to use. For example, you're doing a, uh, an exam. The question, will it be in English or in Arabic? When you teach, are you going to teach in modern standard Arabic dialect or in English? Grading, you really want to make sure that you get the grading. Is, do you want a percentage or points? Because once you create an assignment, would ask you, and you really don't want to change your mind after you finish, and you're like, OK, I want to change my mind. It's going to be more work, right? And then what type of assignments and assessments? OK, now that you have uh, chosen the platform or gotten to know the platform, whether it's a um, Blackboard or Canvas, what you want to do is have outside platform where you're going to actually create the course. And then you copy and paste it in your Canvas because it's really better to have like a Word document or PowerPoint to use to explain that course. So you want to use, use something that doesn't have a password. I mean, if you like Google Doc, unfortunately, Google Doc will have to have a password. That means students will have to have a Google uh, account. And we don't know if all students can access that. We don't know if we have senior students, maybe they, they're not really into computers or something. So I don't recommend it, Google, but it's up to you. Um, another thing you want to think about is it's free. OK, uh, you could use different languages. You can play with the language. You can download pictures, shapes, uh, and uh, record, because you're going to end up recording your voice. You don't want to do it separately. So when I did 201, I did it separately. I don't think there was a recording at that time. It was more work, because you want to put, I mean, it wasn't my work, actually. It was Shai who did everything. She's the queen. And so I had to do the PowerPoint, and then I had to record separately, and she had to put all of them together. But now that recording is possible with the for example, a PowerPoint, it was easy for me just to create it and record it at the same time. Um, so again, why PowerPoint? Again, I think it's easier to use and free. You could record each slide separately. I highly recommend that because if you made an error, you don't have to do the whole thing. And let's say you wanna flip 
some of the slides, let's say you ended up realizing that slide six should have been four, you can easily play with it. But if you do that and you recorded everything together, it's really going to make it confusing for students because they can't follow with the narration that you had, okay? Uh, also, PowerPoint, you could be creative, as you can see, I can always play with it. And, uh, you know, you could uh, insert your own pictures if you like. Then uh, you want to think of the students, what do students need, okay? They really want to have a detailed lesson plan. And you don't have to have it so much detail. But for example, let's say you're teaching uh, present tense conjugation. If you're doing also negation, then let them know, present tense, conjugation, and negation, okay? This way they will, won't go back and say, oh, you did talk about negation, I didn't know, okay? Uh, you wanna have multiple examples. There are times when one example might not kind of give this sense of something, okay? It's a good idea to have different assignments, as Shayu said, because we don't know how students can, you know, assess themselves and, or getting assessed. There are students who have stronger uh, speaking skills uh, versus writing skills. So uh, that's something very uh, important. And quick feedback. If you have 100 students, it's really hard to have a quick feedback immediately. But if you can manage it by putting some assignments as quizzes, you'll definitely have a quick feedback. I don't know if anybody has any question, but uh, let me know. Okay, so when you wanna start with the courses, okay? So you wanna do it lesson like little by little and then expand it. So what I did is actually I put the PowerPoint together. I didn't record anything. And then I kept on adding within like a week. I'm thinking of that lesson, let's say, okay, I'm thinking of the uh, uh, present tense conjugation. Should I put that? Should I leave that? Should I take it away? But at the same time, let's say you're doing present tense conjugation, you don't want students to learn dual. You might wanna say that we do have conjugations for the dual, but we don't use it so often. So we're not going to go over it, for example. So that students won't come back and say, oh, I didn't know there's that. We've never been told, okay? Especially if the course is online, they're not gonna come back and forth with you. So it would be kind of a no, get to know of FYI just for that, okay? And so um, put everything on, as I said, in Word document, PowerPoint, whatever you like. And then you can just, once you're done and you, you uh, record it, then you could copy and paste it on Canvas or Blackboard. That would be easier. You, uh, it's also nice because you really don't need all, like online internet when you do all that background. Uh, I personally don't have internet at home. So I, I usually use the, uh, um, hotspots, so that would be very kind of uh, easy for me, okay? So you wanna create the Canvas uh, course. So first of all, if you're using Canvas, what you need to do is create a module, okay? And for me, I usually create a module and name it with the lesson. So for example, unit one, unit two, greetings, okay? And in that module, okay, you're gonna create a page where you're going to put your objectives, your goals, what do you want students to learn from that course? And then another page where the actual lesson, okay, where you're going to put your documents, copy it and paste it on that page. So you're gonna choose page. You don't wanna choose an assignment because assignment will make the students think that there is something that they have to submit, okay? And then once you wanna do assignments, you could uh, create as an assignment or quizzes or discussions. That depends on what type you're using. And I will show you soon how to do that, okay? And then you wanna review your lesson. You, I mean, if, you, if the course is ready, okay, you could always unpublish everything except for the course and then look into it as a student. That's very easy for Canvas just to see what students can see or not see, okay? So um, again, if you use the PowerPoint, then you can put the information, then you record through slideshow. When you go to slideshow, it would ask you to record. You don't have to have a camera. Oh, what you're doing, recording. You record, you stop, and then you go to this, uh, you can listen to it, of course, and then you go to the next um, page, okay? 
here's the thing. It, when you record, you might want to already have decided what language you want to speak. And you might not want to refer to the page number, especially because if the author decides to have a new, um, a new textbook, a new version, then you don't want to redo the whole thing. You don't probably want to do the date and uh, day and date because if you do that, again, if you want to use it for next semester or the semester after, then you're going to have to redo the whole thing. If you can uh, avoid putting the lesson, that would be great. I personally have to put the lesson because it's related to that lesson. But things you, you want that you want to avoid uh, just to, so that you could use that recording and all the information throughout the years to come, let's say two or three years. OK, so uh, have it ready that make it as if, uh, let's say, any date, right? Any page. OK, the topic is uh, pronouns, right? Doesn't matter which page, right? So that's my recommendation. OK, here's the thing that I always think about is when you teach a class, specifically language, it's almost like teaching cooking for someone who never learned how to cook. There's a lot of like uh, caricature when somebody would like put a whole tomato in a um, soup because the direction didn't say cut the tomatoes. I mean, you know, <laughs> you never know what people would do, right? And expect that students have no idea what other language is doing. I mean, look at this. Arabic, I mean, really, it took me a long time. I was seven years old when I learned English. And I'm like, really, you have is, are, me, I, really? <laughs> Do I really have to say I am, Sana? Why not I, Sana? And, and of course, for English speaker, French and Spanish, having too many of those uh, verb to be, it's, it's a lot of work. So yeah, I mean, you have students who have no idea what's going on in Arabic. Same thing, Arabic students don't know what's going on in language. So expect that there are some kind of a moments when, what is that? So those are the times that you're going to say, okay, I have to give more explanations, okay? So uh, when you want to think about the topics that students should learn, then you have to include it yourself, right? If you think that grammar, I don't want to include gamma, grammar, then expect, because this is completely online. This is not like let's get together and learn grammar through speaking. This is online. So if you come in and say, I don't want to teach grammar, then I'm going to say, how are they going to conjugate in the present tense or past tense? How are they going to negate correctly? Uh, I would say, be careful, because if you want them to learn something, if you want them to learn culture, this is the United States. It's not like they're going to go outside and they're going to listen to Arabic songs. Okay. If you don't have a textbook that has, or a text that has reading, that is building on their reading, then don't come back and say, how, how did you not learn how to read? you know, newspaper. So please do remember that this is completely online. Some students will probably never show up to any of your meetings. How are they going to learn it if you're not going to bring it there and teach them? How you teach it, it's up to you. You know, you, you have a lot of ways to do it. But always remember what you expect from the student is what you are going to have for them. And so um, I guess one of the hardest things is keeping students entertained. And keeping them learning for two months, it's online course. So, and this is a language. It's not easy for any, anybody actually to take an online course for two months. Okay, if it's a language, it could be harder or more frustrating because they can't find peers to talk to. So there are a lot of things that we need to think about when we get into students who are sitting somewhere, maybe they have only phones. I have a student who doesn't have a laptop, so he only used the uh, iPad. So uh, you wanna reach out to them, maybe use English, that's okay if you use that for just to compare or as an example, entertain them, maybe song in every single module, maybe a movie, okay, watch a movie. If you have that accessible, if it's accessible. A, a, you know, do whatever you can do to get them, like to reach out to them, even if they're not there, even if they don't come to your meetings. Okay, so again, media clip would be entertaining. Students love that. I uh, usually put like uh, a song for every single lesson, at least one song as a lengthy assignment. Uh, for example, 
feminine plural would have kalimat, اسم الفاعل, قارئة الفنجان, okay? And they like it, especially if it's the beginning of the semester, they would say, oh, you know, you're having fun in here. Okay, and you don't want to overdo it because you know some songs will end up being an hour. <laughs> we don't want that. Okay, so um, keeping students engaged. There are times when students get more engaged to, with themselves, like with each other, than with the faculty. Why not? So have discussion forums, speaking assignments, especially when they introduce themselves. That would be a really good opportunity for them to talk to each other. And uh, as I said, assignments based on songs or video clips. It's a good idea to, when you have the forms, part of the assignment would be, and read others and make a comment, part of your uh, grade, because this way you would really almost force them to also watch others or listen to others. That's important. Uh, you don't wanna have students who are doing it on their own, they realize that nobody's lis listened to them except for their professor. But I always see that it's really nice when I have them introduce themselves and, you know, talk to each other. Oh, I, I'm doing the same thing. I'm the same country. I do the same. So that would be uh, fun. Okay, so assignments, again, uh, students want everything quick. Really, everything has to be quick, quick, quick. So definitely quick feedback, quickly done, quickly uh, turned in. Okay, so you want to be in the direction you want to be clear. And believe me, every single semester, I realize there's something that needs to be maybe changed either because of the font is small okay if you if you have canvas you know there's no font 16 arabic 14 is really small you go to 18 that's when students can see but it's huge things like that would be important again some things that we don't realize okay it's not only the language it's also how clear it is when you put it together uh, colors okay uh, if you do the assignment, you're going to notice that accessibility would say, you know, the color is not really clear. Okay, so that's really interesting. And then, of course, when you create a rubric, students will come back and forth and ask, why is it this way, not the other way? Okay. So the best way to do the feedback quickly is really you, when you build your assignment on quizzes. Okay. And so self-assessment would be, for example, you do matching or um true or false or choose the correct answer and i'm not saying you do all the assignments like that but if you have i, I usually do like an assignment just this so it would be multi, automatically graded and they can do it multiple times they like it they also learn from it and it's like a guessing game okay and then there's an assignment when they're going to have to actually write or type uh, i don't recommend that you require typing, especially that we want them to learn how to read and write. But I usually tell students for 200 level, they can do either way, you know, it's up to them, okay? I also recommend that you tell students how fast the feedback will be. For example, 24 hours, three days. I usually tell them if the assignment is due, then it would be like within three days or two days. But if it is not due yet, then I'm going to finish the ones that must be done first. Okay, so if it is if the assignment is due, let's say July 1st, I'm not going to go to that until I finish the early ones. I don't usually like to grade quizzes unless I see more than 50% of students have done it, just so that we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Okay, so um, I, I guess we know that students get information from all over the world these days. I don't know what to say other than we have to be smart, what to do. So uh, make sure you have the plagiarizing um, statement, black down browser as much as you can, okay? Provide your own useful links. There are times when you can say, I don't mind they, if they use that, not that. So why don't you just say, you know, use this if you want, you know? Um, if you have regular meetings, then they really don't need to look for somebody else to answer their questions. Um, if you can, uh, I mean, I don't think you want to give your personal phone number, but if you can give them your office number and you are around in the office, that would be great. It's really good idea to kind of check your email regularly and meet students regularly so they don't have to have an excuse of, I didn't know wh where to go. And students do have a lot of interesting excuses. Okay, so um, what if students don't read syllabus? This is a 
like this is number one problem with online students. I personally go over the syllabus first meeting, okay? Not all students come in the first meeting. It's an online course, but you could record it and then uh, post it, okay? But there's times when students get too personal when they wanna ask a question, so you can't post it or publish that meeting. I would say every meeting we go over, I go over and ask them, you know, do you have any questions? When a student asks a question that the answer is in the syllabus, I do share the screen again to show them, this is the answer, here it is, okay? Create a syllabus quiz. That's a really good idea and make it like automatically graded. And if you want to make it, you know, multiple as, uh, attempts, that would be great. Just so that they would know this is what's going on. Some students uh, thought that the syllabus quiz is actually the syllabus. So I, I was like, no, no. Uh, syllabus agreement. That's a great idea. I think it's a good idea to remind students. So for example, we ask students when they email us, tell us that, I'm so-and-so, I'm in this so-and-so class that's online and I'm asking about questions so-and-so in the assignment so-and-so in the lesson so-and-so. That's the body of that email. Because if you're, if you're actually doing three classes, two of them the same, it's really hard to remember a name when you have three students with the same name. I mean, there's a time when I had three Rawans and Muhammad or so. So that's what we require students to do. Another thing uh, we tell students, do not send us an attachment for your homework because everything should be on Canvas. You want to have it all there so that if in case students would say, well, I'll send it to you in the email, then you have the answer. You can't do that. Put it in the assignment, okay? Uh, remember that when you give information that is too much is a lot, but less isn't problematic for students because Less information means that they're going to have more questions, they're more confused, um, and they're going to search for answers. Whether it's the information about the lesson or the assignment or the quiz, give them as much as you think they need. And it's really hard to think of students, what they need when you don't have a student. Like when you're creating a course online, you really don't have anybody. You're just recording it, thinking about, okay, what would students will ask me? Let me just pretend that I'm a student as well, okay? The more work you give them, the more likely students will uh, do not do work on time, and maybe they're going to look for somebody else to do it for them. That is something that I, that I learned, okay? So assignments, for example, for one-on-one, -on -one, okay? The assignments weren't too much, okay? Not that I think of, okay? But for example, some, a colleague had a quick turn, turnout for the assignments. So starting the class they have four days to finish unit one so students said this is too much of assignments so my response was that it's not a lot it's actually the same thing as it face to face but because four days is not much i usually give them a first you know unit probably a, a whole week okay so you don't want it i mean one thing is to giving too much of assignments but the other one is giving not much but then you don't you're giving them only two days to finish Okay, so truly we have to be realistic about those courses. At NOVA, the language uh, faculty have decided that 100 level courses should not have less than 10 weeks, online courses. I think that's a realistic. Uh, 200 level could go to eight weeks. That's possible, but specifically online students don't think that they are meeting. So they're doing on their own arrangement times, okay? And uh, there's a time when students will not buy the book or read the book. Okay, so you might want to stress the fact that textbook means doing your homework. Okay, or maybe have the, the textbook required, but have 20% of the assignments outside of the textbook. Again, the media or anything else. So this way, this way you could just tell them, you know what, buy it. And if it's going to take two weeks, that's okay. Do the other assignments. Um, when you do the assignments, you, you have a due date. I highly recommend that you don't only have a due date, but you have a late due date. So I tell them, this is the assignment. You have three more days and it's going to close. That three days, okay, that's going to say late, but they will not lose any points. 
you have to, if you, if you want my advice, close that date because otherwise they're going to keep on doing it until the last day of class. And it would be not fair because there is a, you know, it's a late, right? If you're going to give them a lot of attempts, I recommend that you give them X amount of attempts, three, four. What happens is that they do the homework, you correct it, they do it again. Do you want that or do you want them to not have the opportunity? That's up to you, but you don't want to have it forever. Okay, so just my recommendations and advices, okay? Online meetings, have them regularly. We usually require one hour per, require for the faculty, one hour per chapter, okay? For the, I mean, for us, we have two hours of uh, office hours per class anyway, but for students, it is online course. They don't have to come. It's an extra credit, okay? You have students who are working full-time, daytime, some students working full-time evening. So you really wanna shift between daytime, nighttime, evening, uh, you know, Monday, Friday, do not do it set one time so that once no student will come to you and say, you always had it at that time and I couldn't come, okay? I would highly recommend that the camera is on, but guess what? Some students might not want a camera on. They don't wanna get engaged. They just log in and that's it. And that's, that's actually their rights because it's an online course, it's not virtual. And again, that's really up to you. If you want them to have that, put that in your syllabus. Maybe when you are in, I would like to have a camera on, or I want you to get engaged. My class this semester was pretty nice. I actually was able to put them in breakout rooms. I usually can't uh, because they're either not many students or they're not really engaged. So it's uh, you put them in breakout rooms and then students will come back and say, nobody's there. Okay, so um, it depends. Um, Again, I highly recommend that you record the meetings. If you can publish it, that would be great. If you have students are asking personal questions, you might want to say, want, want to wait until the end so I can stop the recording and then answer your questions. You can always uh, pause the recording if you like and then just answer the questions. That's really up to you. But uh, uh, meetings um, could also be uh, not like a group meeting, like one-on-one. -on -one. That would be your choice as well. I usually do it for uh, students who are, um, let's say, not ready for the course. They realize, you know, this would be hard or difficult. Okay, so any questions? I do have other things that I want to show you. Uh, if there's any question about the PowerPoint, I don't have the time. Oh, it's well, okay. Any questions? Or should I just uh, go to another thing to show you? By the way, this is Yemen. Okay, I guess nobody has any questions. So I'm gonna just show you what I did in my uh, unit one. For example, I do see some questions, I guess. No question, oh, okay, thank you. Okay, uh, so like, for example, when I did uh, my course, I used Ahla uh, Sahla, so that's why I called it letters and sounds. When I did this course uh, recording, I literally, wait, uh, let's see if I can just uh, do it this way. I actually did this. That's what I did. And then I showed them this so that I would go and then write. I mean, when I recorded it, I actually can just write and show them how to write the course. But again, when you do like a course like this, you really want to have it detailed. One of them is that you want to have, you know, students remember it's right to left, okay? And then I showed them this diagram. And again, when I recorded it, okay, notice that when you go to, um, let me show you again. Um, let's see, hold on. Uh, okay. So you all know how to record. I mean, if you go to slideshow, you would see the hide. Uh, okay, you see the record slideshow, right? This is why it's really simple. Okay, uh, when you when I went to, for example, uh, Idafa, for example, I did both English and Arabic because 
I know it's an online course. I don't want students to come back and say, everything was in Arabic, I didn't understand anything, okay? I went back to reminding them what's definite now, okay? Because you really want to have everything. Again, it's like cooking. You don't want to tell students, uh, put the tomatoes and the uh, whatever, uh, onions. You want to literally say, cut the onions to pieces, you know, because they, they might not kind of remember what's definite words are, okay? And then again, each example, I put the English, I wouldn't like to do that in a regular class, but it, it is an online, it's hard for them to go back and forth and ask in a regular class or even virtual, they can just say, what does that mean? What's jadwal mean? And of course, if they Google jadwal, they probably would think it's a river, a smaller river, who knows? Okay, so that was uh, something that I wanted to show you. And then the Canvas course, uh, in the meantime, if anybody has any questions. Okay. So the Canvas course, okay, this is not published course. Uh, for example, if you go to the quizzes, okay, and so you, for example, add a quiz, you want a classical quiz submit, okay, you could name the quiz, you know, the number one, for example or if you want to do the topic. So the questions, when you create a new uh, question, okay, you do have a lot of choices, okay? Multiple answers, multiple drop downs, um, fill in the blanks, uh, true or false, okay? So my highest important part of this class, or workshop, I should say, is the direction. You want it right to left. You want to type in Arabic right to left. And I also, like when I tell, like the first day of class, I literally go over this as well because students might end up typing. Okay, especially if 200 level, okay. You want to show them, you know, there's the font and the font there's 16 is not there. And you know what, 18, that's what I go with. Okay, so that those things are, probably easy to know, but for students, might, maybe not, okay? And then you want to choose exam. You want to shuffle answers. You might want to have a time limit, maybe not. Allow multiple attempts if you do how many? If not, maybe not, okay? Do, they, do you want them to see the responses or not? Do you want them to see one question at a time, access code? Okay, and here's the most important thing is the due date. So if I were to say the due is the 20th, okay, and then I go to, okay, so I'm giving them three days to take it. So 20 plus three, there it is. That means it's gonna close, okay? So I'm just gonna save it this way. It would show with all the timings and until. Once it's, you know, the 23rd, nobody's going to see anything. Okay, um, the modules, as I said, it's a good idea to create a module, okay? Um, whatever you like to call it, maybe lesson 16, for example. And then once you have it, you could add items or drag items. So when you add, so you might wanna have just a page. Okay, and then you can just, uh, if you have it already there, it's there, but how, however, you might wanna just create a page. Okay, page name, um, objectives. Okay, whatever you like to call it. I mean, even you can type in Arabic, I mean, you know, and then you add the item. Uh, this is how we did it with one of the courses, for example, uh, 23, we have the lesson, and then we have the assignments, and then the quizzes. I can just show you that as well. And I'm not sure if anybody has any questions. Okay, so like, this is what we did, the purpose, the directions, and we actually embedded the uh, tutorials, okay? And the actual um, uh, video clip, and then the assignments, got the rubric, and then we go next. 
And then, so next it would take us to the assignments that they have to do. And notice that th this is just assignments. This is not a quiz type, okay? And then you go to next, and then you have the quiz, and that's when they can take their quiz. And if we could, uh, we could do preview. Okay, so the preview of the quiz, you'd see that there are listening parts. They're gonna listen and answer, organize the sentences. They can type it, they can copy and paste the words if they want, it's gonna be difficult. And then there's the multiple choice. And you know, at the end, you can keep editing the quiz. If you do editing, notice what happens in here, which say show questions details. Okay, then it would give you the details or nothing. Okay, it will not tell you what the details are. Okay, if you have a lot of questions, like I believe 25 or more, you will not be able to show the details. So I don't recommend that you have a lot of question details. And this is why I like the idea of uh, multiple drop downs. Okay, so um, I'm going to cancel that and stop the share. So this is my uh, presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, please let me know. So Senna, there's a, there's a question in chat here. Uh, if you are using Canvas for a semester, what will happen to all the modules that you created? If you want to use them again, are the modules saved for later oh, use? For the yes. Uh, let me show you, actually. Let's see if I can go to my original. Hmm, let me. Uh, OK, let me just go to dashboard so I can show you how things would go. One of the things that I like about Canvas is that, so you have the dashboard, okay? And so if you, let's say, um, I'm just gonna pretend myself. Okay, let's just go to Senate Sandbox, okay? So you have the course, let's say this is the course that I really wanted to like get, okay? And uh, what you could do, okay, I recommend that you create the module now name first because if you like if you put it there, you send it, it might kind of not know where to go. Okay, so create your module name. Let's say lesson four, five, lesson five, lesson six, and lesson seven. Okay, so if I were just to say uh, lesson, oh, actually, I think it was unit, unit one. Add modules. I'm just gonna I'm just unit two. Okay, let's just do that. Okay. And then I'm gonna go back to the dashboard. I'm gonna go to courses. And because the, the old courses are gone, you can go to all courses. And last time I taught 101. Um, none online, it was fall. There it is. Okay, so I'm here. Okay, so I can go to the modules and then copy to. That's one way to do it. Okay, and let's see where, now I have to look for it because it's a, it, it's a kind of interesting because I have so many classes in here. It, it it's, uh, Whoops, maybe I should make it smaller. Okay. Where are we copying it? Where? <laughs> the sandbox. I think this is the sandbox. VW. Okay, let's just say copy. Okay. So I am going to go back to the dashboard. Going back to my sand. This one. There it is. Okay, everything. Okay, you want to be careful because it will actually do, do this. That's the worst part. If you have something due, students, I had students email me like, oh my God, did I miss anything? No, but you really want to make sure you play with the dates before you publish it. Okay, if you have one item, if I ended up, 
going with one item to copy, it will probably ask me with the module or it would go somewhere you have no idea where it's gonna go. Let's say I'm hesitant to send it somewhere that I don't wanna send it to, but um, where's my other sandbox? I really don't know where my other sandbox is, but let me see if I can get a, oh, there's one. Sand, no, not this one. Sandbox, sandbox, there it is. So it will ask me which unit, which lesson. Okay, so I want it unit two, for example, top or bottom. I'm gonna do it top, copy it, okay? So if you do have <clears throat> one item, it's going to be asking you where, or if there's no place, it's just gonna throw it there. Okay, so that's why I highly recommend that you already kind of prepare yourself where to put it. If you have, for example, the whole module, it's so easy just to go with the whole module to create it. Um, let's see. So going back to this one and modules. And, oh, I think I had the other, other sandbox maybe. Oh, there's excellent markers. or maybe the other one, but you could always send to or copy, but I, I don't recommend send to. I would recommend copy to. You could uh, move, you know. So I hope I answered that question. And uh, just to um, add to what you've just showed everyone and told everyone, um, Xiao Yu said, we can copy the whole course or part of the course to the next semester. So you could do, I guess, yeah, course I, as well. Yeah, I'm not sure because the course is kind of a hidden. I can't remember if I can do that here. Maybe Xiao Yu would remember. Oh gosh. Yes, um, you can, you know, for example, for you already have a shell for the next semester. So you go into that shell and then under the settings, there is a course import. So you click on course import oh, and then you is. select the ones that uh, from your last semester, you can mm -hmm. either copy the whole course or right. you can select a certain portion of the course to be copied. Right. And also you can remove all the uh, previous uh, due dates you mm -hmm. can remove the dates or you can say set new dates so all, you can do all of this just go to the new shell under the settings click go to settings and then import a course and do that yeah and also so like like sarah just showed you you can also do that part but you no know, portions by portion just like to go to a certain module and um, click that three dots and then, then copy two Right. Another way, yeah. Yeah, uh, so either way, if you, do, if, okay, so yeah, um, I do wanna say that I think it's uh, Shayu's way is really easier because if you really wanna have also the uh, homepage, it would be really nice because you don't have to redo the whole thing. But if it's truly you have just one thing, then if you do the whole course, it would be definitely everything. And then you might want to have to just delete some stuff. But yeah, that was another way. And let me see if I can, I'm trying to find something that's not like, it's not going to make a mess. Let's see, maybe fall semester. And get fall, oh. 102, no, I think that's a online, not an actual course uh, fall. Okay. So if I go to the settings, okay. Okay, experts. So I'm, I'm putting it course and create export. And then it would tell me where is it going? But because the course is so old, it's giving me that kind of a chance. This is why 
it's not gonna <laughs> work out in here. Uh, I'm not teaching actually a course that is regular. I'm teaching online, so I don't wanna mess it up. But otherwise, uh, so cannot be downloaded after 30 days, obviously, so it won't work in here. But uh, what we have, here's something else that you might wanna remember. If you look at uh, on the courses that we have, there are times when it is the end. So if it is the end, it's really hard to, you know, play with the course. That's because after the pandemic, this is what we have. Before the pandemic, it would be up to the faculty to keep it or not keep it. Because we didn't really have to use it. I used to use it, but I didn't, you know, that's one thing. So it, I was told that if the course is old, then it's uh, not easy to import, export. But if it's still there, Shayu showed you the easiest, best way. Okay, uh, we've got a couple more questions. Um, the first is, what alternatives to Google would you recommend? In terms of uh, Google for yeah, the, the, I don't quite understand the question either. What's Google? Your Google Pages or Google what? You mean Google Doc? Because I don't Google usually use do Google Doc. Google. <laughs> I actually yeah. just use the PowerPoint, like the regular Word PowerPoint. So I don't have to use Google. Leali, do you want to weigh in? Maybe she's not there. Okay, we can go on to the next question. Maybe she'll, oh wait. Oh. She, may, said she uh, doesn't recommend Google because, uh, uh, because older students. Maybe. Oh, yeah. I mean, Google uh, Doc. And so this is why I use the uh, PowerPoint. So like uh, when they do presentation, they have presentations to do. I show them the way I showed you, which is PowerPoint, just a regular PowerPoint. Uh, what happens when students have uh, used Google Doc and use PowerPoint through Google Doc, it actually required me to um, kind of, um, you know, the access, access it through, you know, my password and stuff. I felt, okay, so I can do that, but other students will, have, will not be able to watch their PowerPoint presentation. So my advice, I was just saying that regular PowerPoint, Word document PowerPoint, that was my, some students like to use Percy, Prezi, what, what do they call it? It's really fun. Prezi, yeah. Yeah, heard of but that. I, yeah, I, I think I only did it once. Maybe I should get to know more, okay. Uh, and then there's another question. Uh, let's see. Are there tools on campus, Canvas to create interactive worksheets? Have you tried integrating interactive worksheets from other websites? And these are worksheets that are not only multiple choice answers, but more involved like matching, voice recording, drawing, et cetera, like in Padlet. I um, didn't. I don't let know. Let me Should answer I... this question. Yeah, Actually, OK, uh, matching, yes. Canvas, you can do matching in Canvas. Voice recording, yes, you can use Canvas Studio to do to create the voice recording and also re in, could, you can uh, record your voice directly in Canvas's, uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, what is that? The editor, okay. Yeah, you can just uh, inside the Canvas, uh, no, if there's an assignment, you can go to media and then record to do recording. You can do that. Drawing, drawing. Yeah, uh, I'm, not, I, I'm not quite sure about drawing though. But the other things you, you could do, matching voice recording. I, I think you could also, in the studio, you could record whiteboard and then you draw. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Use studio to do whiteboard, yes. Yeah. Well, we are now at an hour and a half, um, but if there are any other questions, you know, please, uh, please submit them in the chat or feel free to speak up. If not, we'll wrap this up. I'll wait just a minute to see if anyone, just to, you know, I'll wait a little bit to see if uh, anyone uh, has any other questions for you.
You're welcome. They are thanking you. Yes. You're welcome, Sirwan. You're welcome, Ramon. Thank you all for, for being with us. Um, Shukran, I thought, Yeah, I thought you did a great job of, you know, from very practical and um, detailed tips to, some, to more philosophical uh, recommendations in terms of inclusivity and engaging the students. Um, makes me want to take an online Before. course, actually, and uh, yeah. you know, work on my Arabic, which I, which I yeah. do. So, yeah. <laughs> Shukran Jazeelan. Afwan. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. And uh, take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.